the horror world, you got the vampire people and you got the werewolf people. Now, are you a werewolf person or a vampire person? I'm a werewolf baby yeah, all the I way. Too. I'm a werewolf. You can look at me, you can talk yeah, to me, yeah. and in five minutes I'll tear your face off and eat it like a hot dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't you get the claim that uh, since you're glorifying serial killers that you're going to give an example to others to become serial killers? Oh, That's it's, a standard it's thing I hear all the time. I'm a trained martial artist. I'm a trained martial artist. Good. I can kill all three of you guys in a heartbeat with my cock. In a heartbeat. All right? When you're a martial artist and you're able to, to dismember a human being, that's about your morality. That's about your self-control. That's about, I'm not supposed to hurt that person because, you know, they've got a mother and a father. And Did what they do to me really that important? We got into a lot of issues with these talk shows where they talked about, you know, my comics causing more violence. Oh. And I brought up the Well, that's fact the that, standard thing that you're going to hear. Well, the, the point of the story is that I said, well, look at the Japanese. They have the most violent television in the world and they have the lowest street crime. And the host of the show turned around and said, oh, well, that's because of their society. And I went, duh. Hello. Hello. It's the society. We have to teach personal responsibility. You are responsible for your actions. I don't care if mommy and daddy beat your ass when you were little. If you hurt that person and you broke that law and you robbed that bank and you made those people homeless because you were a banker and you sold a bunch of bad mortgages that you knew were bad, you're a bad person. You did that wrong. You knew what you were doing. No one believes in the quality of their work anymore. No one says, you know, if you're going to do a job, do a job right. I do. You know, people... <laughs> I get lots of stuff like, you know, he paid me $5, he got $5 worth of job. They paid me $15,000, they got $15,000 worth of fight. Well, that attitude is not always so good. When I was a bouncer, I saw a lot of bands come in and they'd see like five people in the bar that night and they'd give them five people worth of show. No. Then we had a band called Tool that came through and now Tool's a big metal band, everybody knows them, but at this time, they just had a little EP, I didn't even know what the hell, Tool, who the hell is Tool? <laughs> And there was literally five people in the bar that weren't working, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, and these guys put on the show. They put on the Monster Arena show. Yeah. And they're someplace now because they did that. Golden Earring did the same thing. That's right. I love, that's a great band. Hey, you got to love Radar Love. Radar Love! Uh, yeah. <laughs> go, we're going Damn back, it. We're going back to when the, that first LP came out on their first tours. They, they played a club called The Trolley in Seattle where I was a DJ. The DJ would do an hour and then the band would do their set, and, you know, back and forth. And they gave that crowd every night the most incredible show because they were rehearsing for their one shot at the Fillmore, right? So they were just getting it down. So you came into this little club in Seattle and you got the full show. I mean, you got the real meal deal. Yeah.